What's going on? BS Backstage Sweet Greet brought to you by the Range of Lake Norman and Range of Valentine. Got some questions that you guys tweeted in throughout the week. We're hanging out backstage with Hunter Hayes before he takes over uh, Whiskey River. Another free show. This is your second time playing here with Whiskey River. Yeah. The first time was crazy. Are you excited for tonight? I'm hoping it's crazier. I'm yeah, I mean, 10 times crazier. That's the, well, I don't know about 10, maybe it's yeah. like 15. About 15, nice. yeah, that'll work. 17. We'll see. <laughs> we had a couple of people send in stay, uh, different questions. This comes from Addy Poo Eleven. That's an interesting Twitter name. Who inspired you? Yeah, yeah. Addy Poo oh, Eleven. Who inspired you <laughs> to pursue your dream of singing and performing? There's a lot of people. Um, Garth was one of my first favorites. There's a lot of local guys in Louisiana too. A guy named Wayne too. He's huge, huge local musician. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, he's been all over the country, all over the world, but. Um, you know, on to Brian Wyatt, on to sort of, uh, I listened to, I, I studied so many people, but I think Garth was one of the first people that I saw like on stage and I said, I want to be like that guy. So you've seen Garth live before? I have once and it was yeah. a long time ago. I'm actually in the process of begging friends of mine yeah. uh, to help me uh, make a make a long drive this weekend to go see him. Just Where's he at this weekend? I think he's in Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. yeah. So well, I you know, mean, if you need a road trip, I have I'm, no I'm down to go. I mean, I'll, I'll go see Garth. That's like the bucket list. That's what I keep saying. I'm like calling my friends like, okay, come on. Road trip, Garth Brooks concert. Come on, what's wrong with that? All right, next week's BS Backstage, can Hunter Hayes find tickets for Garth Brooks? It's going to be <laughs> It's going to be like a road race. Yeah. yeah. This is from uh, Nina. How do you feel when you hear about the positive impact <laughs> Invisible has wow. had on people? Yeah, I'm fantastic. I mean, it's unbelievable. The stories that you get, I mean... You know, I think, I think, um, I don't think it's really communicated enough how much that impacts me or even us, the whole band, mm -hmm. especially just, you know, us as writers, songwriters, you dream of something like that, you dream of a song meaning something to somebody. Right. So the first time somebody says anything about it, anything at all, um, it changes a lot of things for you. The whole thing is just that you dream of a song being somebody else's soundtrack. And I've said that many times. Right. You say but I, I love I, I love it when a song becomes uh, something really neat. A song is nothing until it means something to someone else. Now, how long after you release that song and start singing it, did people actually come up to you and say, was it instantaneous? Did it take a little while for people, you know, for it to sink in? Or yeah. was it like, boom, right off the Man, it was pretty quick. I mean, that night, just after we sang it, you know, we got to luckily we got to you know, debut it on the Grammy. Right. So, uh, that night, I was I was getting unbelievable response, and that week was a pretty emotional week. Yeah, yeah, because you hear a lot of stories for the first time. And you dream of a song being on the record, but you have no idea that it's going to be a single. You have yeah. no idea how anybody's going to receive it. So yeah, big cool. deal. This is from uh, Anna Wilson. If you could play only one instrument for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? It's tough, man. Uh, I like playing electric guitar. Obviously, it's a very emotional instrument. Uh, seems to be my home lately. I apparently purchased a lot of mandolins. I'm a big mandolin fan. It's a bit of a toss up. It depends. It depends on what kind of day. You know what yeah. I mean? Every uh, once in a while you have a mandolin day, you know? Yeah, you just gotta have a mandolin day. You know what I mean? I got about six of them on the bus right now. You need a picture. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. This is from Rebecca. She goes, Can you give us a run through your day in the life of Hunter Hayes? It depends. Every day is different. And that's the thing, there's no routine. Um, it does. It changes every day. Uh, it's consistently inconsistent. Yeah. Um, but it, depending you know, on what city you're in, and you start you start decently early, and I don't mean like early for me. Early as a musician is like eleven o'clock in the morning because you're up till because you're up till one two o'clock in the morning. You know, performing until almost midnight, right? And you have to be at your prime. You can't be tired when you do a show. You have to be like this has to be like my lunch time, like my like I'm ready. You know what I mean? So like your day has to shift time wise. But anyway, enough of excuses. Um, there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of interviews. There's a lot of uh, different performances depending on the day. Sometimes if it's a show day, typically everything's geared towards the show. So I try not to perform at all and keep everything held for the show. You know what I mean? Keep all the energy for for, for, the, for the show. You know, some days we'll do you know four or five acoustic shows just for fun. You know? Just depend. By then your fingers are like blistered up. You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is from Amanda. She goes, "What is your craziest fan experience?" Craziest fan experience. Um, actually, this happened the other night again. It's happened a few times. Mm -hmm. um, it always catches you a bit off guard. You get in the bus, and we leave. You know, the bus travels, you know, between the hours of midnight and, like, 8 a.m., right? So we don't really stay anywhere for more than, like, 24 hours. So, uh, so when the bus leaves, you know, you get about an hour before you're, like, winding down, you're, like, trying to get to sleep or whatever. So you're, like, winding down, just chilling out, trying to, you know, lower the energy level, all that stuff. Um, 
And it happened one night a couple of years ago, and it completely caught all of us off guard. Uh, I was in the back of the bus, and I heard a lot of like screaming, mm -hmm. and I thought they must be watching a movie really, really loud in the front of the bus. Mm -hmm. um, and I opened the window, there's a bunch of flashes outside, right? And we're rolling down the road, dude, 60, 70 miles an hour, right? Interstate, right? And there was somebody right next to us with, you know, the hands out the window and the phone, and it's like the cameras and stuff. It was crazy, like taking a picture of the bus, like yeah. going down the road, like screaming. Aren't you people trying to fall asleep right now? <laughs> <laughs> people are going to that trailer park for that kind of stuff. Right? <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, Hunter Hayes. It's me and Greek, brought to you by Rangel Lake Norman and Valentine. Uh, we're about to go inside, hit the stage at Whiskey River. You ready? Let's get rocking, man. Let's Come on. Play.